Guys, there's so much going on in the blockchain space right now. There are all these different niches that are growing into big trends. We've seen it with decentralized finance or DeFi. We've seen it with NFTs and collectibles. And now this. There's another really important trend that I want to teach you about today that you need to know about if you care about blockchain. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish, then head on over to dappyuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So what is this big trend that you need to know about? Well, it's the decentralized web or D-Web for short. So this is a brand new internet that's being built that's not controlled by any single authorities. Instead, it's broken up or decentralized across multiple computers across the globe so that the power is actually in the hands of the people instead of these central authorities. Some people also call this Web 3.0, sort of building off that Web 2.0 idea. So in order to understand like what Web 3 does, let's talk about some of the problems with Web 2 right now. So there's centralization like we talked about, where basically all the power lies in the hands of a single entity, uh, but also censorship. And this is one that I think people are starting to realize more and more that a lot of big platforms can basically just ban things they don't like. And also a single point of failure, which basically means, you know, somebody wants to take down an app. All they have to do is attack the app itself. So we'll talk about that in a minute, how these problems are different. And so we'll talk about some of these things in contrast with D-Web. So here's some of the benefits of D-Web or Web 3.0 compared to that model. So it's decentralized, like I talked about. So basically, it's more democratic. The power is in the hands of people who actually run the network. So like if you participate in running a blockchain, you know, you're responsible for that. It's censorship resistant. So basically, like once something's published on the D-Web, you can't really take it down. So if you put a website on, you know, a file storage system and serve those assets that way, nobody can take your website down. Talk about that here in a minute. And then also, you know, it's, it's unstoppable. So um, people talk about cryptocurrencies being uncensorable by governments, right? They're borderless. Basically, if you have a distributed web that runs in multiple countries all over the world, like no single jurisdiction can like just take the cryptocurrency down. Now, these ideas have been around for a while. In fact, it's one of the original visions for the Ethereum project to create this world computer for a decentralized web to run on. But we're seeing a resurgence of interest in D-Web or Web 3.0. And so I want to make this video to talk about it because it's really important for you to know about if you want to become a blockchain developer. So now let's talk about more concrete examples of D-Web projects. Basically, you can think of the D-Web initiative as taking anything that you currently use on the internet and just decentralizing it. That's what decentralized finance or DeFi did. It basically just took existing financial products and moved them over to the blockchain, things like savings, loans, and trading. So in that example, if you want to create money, do it on blockchain. If you want to make loans, you know, do it with smart contracts on Ethereum. So basically, anything that you can think of that goes on a web server, you know, you could do it with D-Web. Same thing for a database. You want to store some information, you can do it with D-Web, blockchain, file store, and then also, you know, DNS and domain names. All right, so now let's talk about some different D-Web protocols. So first and foremost, blockchain is going to play a major part in the decentralized web, right? And so that's why I'm talking about Ethereum here first. I've done a ton of videos on my channel about how to create smart contracts with Ethereum. In many ways, that's replacing the, uh, you know, code and the data part of your application, like the web server. But now I want to talk about a lot of other important components of D-Web that aren't really blockchain specific. So uh, one example is IPFS. So this is for decentralized file storage. So if you want to create files for like a website or any kind of like decentralized application, then you can use IPFS for that. So also Filecoin is an incentivized file storage mechanism. So you know, if you want to create like a decentralized Dropbox, for example, you can do that with Filecoin. There's also Swarm, which is Ethereum's storage protocol. And so that's for file storage. But then there's also for like communication. So what if you wanted to build a chat application, for example? Well, you could do something like Whisper, okay? So this is a communication protocol for smart contracts, but people have actually used this to create things like, you know, uh, chat applications. So status has a pretty good example of this. You can chat in a decentralized way with their app. And there's also decentralized domain names. So ENS is an example of this. So basically, if you have a uh, Ethereum wallet, for example, like in MetaMask, then you can create your own blockchain domain name that points to that Ethereum address. And that gives you a human readable name. So you can do this with ENS. You can also do it with unstoppable domains and create your own blockchain domain name for like a 
dot crypto address as well. All right, so let me share a concrete diagram so that you can understand how this works and how all these pieces fit together. So let's start off with Web 2.0. So this is like how you use the internet kind of like right now. If you're not using blockchain, let's just say you're watching this video on YouTube or something like that. So what you do is, you know, let's say you're at your computer at a desktop or a laptop and you access the website over your web browser, right? So what happens is, you know, you enter in, you know, youtube.com uh, in your web browser, and then that, you know, goes to DNS first, which says, hey, where does YouTube dot com point to and then it points to basically a web server now it's a little more complex than that but that's a simple idea so basically like that's where the website part of youtube.com lives and then that points is on a web server and then that points to a back end which is where all the back end code that runs the actual app of youtube.com and also the data um you know all of the video files are stored on a web server and things like that um, so all that's here on this, you know, server. Okay. So basically this is centralized, which means that, you know, it's a single point of failure. You know, YouTube has full control over all this kind of stuff and also censorship. So Web3 looks different and I'll explain that. So uh, let's say you were looking at a decentralized version of YouTube, for example. Well, you'd use your browser, all right? And you would need a special blockchain browser or you can install a Chrome extension like MetaMask, for example, that give you an Ethereum wallet, which basically means uh, you have a username that gives you access to all the all the decentralized web. That's how D-Web is different. You have one username for everything rather than you know each different app containing your username and password. And then you connect with both of those things directly to some decentralized DNS system. So let's say you went to YouTube.crypto or something like that, or some other decentralized domain name. Well, the decentralized domain resolver would basically take care of that and say, okay, you want to go to this decentralized domain name, where does that point to? Well, it might point you to an IPFS link. So remember, that's the uh, sort of decentralized protocol that I told you about for you know storing files. Because you know you can put your entire website on IPFS. You could put the front end to youtube.com on IPFS, right? And then that would go here on IPFS, right? And then uh, it would point to the back end. So it would say like all the back end logic, the code, that could be on a blockchain, okay? So point to a blockchain, and then all that code could be contained in smart contracts, which contain, could contain some of the really essential data, right? Like the videos that have been added, right? But then the video files also need to be stored somewhere, because that's really common. You don't always like store the video files in the same place that you store uh, a record of each video. So that could also be stored back on a decentralized file storage system like IPFS or Filecoin, for example. And then all the information gets served back to the user and their web browser after they request this information. So it works exactly like the internet, at least the, the start and the end. But then everything in the middle is totally different. And that gives you all the benefits. There's no single point of failure. Like if you wanted to create an app that can't be taken down by any jurisdiction, that's how you do it. So nothing can be censored this way either. And you can also create those sort of democratic mechanisms so that more people can participate in running this so it doesn't have that centralized control. All right, so that's my overview of the decentralized web or D-Web for short. Again, this is a really important trend that you need to know about if you care about blockchain, you care where this whole space is headed. There's, of course, a lot of work still left to be done in this space, but that's one of the exciting things about being here and being early because there's so much upside to being ahead of the curve on these trends. And so that's what I try to do in this channel, keep you guys informed by making these videos. So make sure you smash the like button down below and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And so if you like this video and you want to jump in there and start learning this stuff step by step, then how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage and find any of my free courses listed there, you know, like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. In fact, I have a brand new video coming out really soon that's going to show you how to build a D-Web application. So make sure you watch for that. And if you like those tutorials and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, uh, then I can show you how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish. Just head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.